Today we're getting down to the straight truth on top rated seller plus as well as 30 day free returns. Hey, it's done. Today we're going to talk about 30 day free returns and top rated seller plus status. There's a lot of misconceptions from a lot of sellers, including ones who have been doing this for a very long time on what is and isn't included in these policies. Today we're going to look at the policies. We're going to explain to you why I use 30 day free return policies and why I strive to be a top rated seller. Now let's look at what a defect is to begin with. There's a difference between a defect and a feedback. They're used kind of interchangeably by eBay, but there is two different distinctions by what those terms mean. Now, eBay protects you from many different things here, as you can see. They have the money-back guarantee. You've got to follow some of the reasons and rules on here. Now, the biggest misconception most people do is they'll come to this page here, and they'll look at the very last one here. Any buyer feedback, positive, neutral, and negative, along with detailed seller ratings, will be removed promptly from transactions in which an eBay money-back guarantee case is resolved in your favor by eBay. Now that has no bearing whatsoever on a return. That does not in any way, shape, or form mean that a return won't ding you. A case is not a return. A return is a request until someone asks eBay to step into it. Now here's eBay actually stating that if you are confused on what a case is versus a request. When someone opens up a return, that is simply a request. If you go ahead, take the return, refund them, it is closed. It was just a request but that does mean they can leave negative feedback and you could get a defect from it depending on how they opened up the request. That is handled through the normal return process and does not negate somebody being able to leave you negative feedback. So in these cases, you are not covered by a return request. Again, a return request is not a case. Now it does go into some more descriptions on it. If you cancel a transaction because you're out, that's a ding. If a buyer asks eBay to step in, you will be dinged too if it's cited on the buyer's behalf. Now there are some that eBay will automatically remove, but a return request is not on here. If you lose a case, that is not on here as well. You can check it out yourself. So if somebody opens up a return, that is a request, not a case. You are not covered under normal circumstances, just like it says on these pages. Now let's look at the actual eBay money back guarantee requests section on eBay's rules as well. If we close an eBay money back guarantee case or appeal request in your favor, we will remove feedback and defects. Now you have to read this entire block. You can't just look at this top sentence here and assume that you've read everything you need to know and that eBay is going to take care of all of these cases. That is not how it works. Now if you read right down here, if a buyer reports that an item isn't as described, that is most of the cases you are going to have. Again, this follows along with what we just read up here. If the buyer submits a return request because an item isn't as described in the listing, you are protected from negative and neutral feedback if if you offer free returns accept the return and give a refund you have to offer free returns for you to be covered if you do not offer free returns no matter what again you will be dinged for those transactions so if you don't offer free returns this is all null and void immediately you do not get any coverage unless you have free returns this is the number one reason why I offer free returns and why I recommend it to most every seller on there who sells vintage collectibles and things like that you will be covered but without free returns you will not be covered. If somebody opens up a return, there is nothing you can do without free returns to stop them from leaving you negative feedback. Again, why I do free returns. Now, other folks assume that if someone opens up a return but doesn't return the item, that you are not covered at all. Again, that is not correct at all. If a buyer doesn't ship a return, in cases where we don't receive proof of shipment from your buyer while the return request is active, we will protect you by removing 
removing any negative or neutral feedback left on that transaction once the case is automatically closed. All you have to do is wait for the case to close and they can't leave you feedback. If they do, it will be removed by eBay. If you do not read the entire section under eBay money back guarantee requests, you will not understand what is going on. Now onto the metrics on what will or won't hurt your store. As I've shown you, there is no coverage to save you when it is an item not as described and you do not offer free return shipping. So if they report item not as described, but yet they never paid for it, you are covered. A buyer requests a cancellation, you are covered. Or when the item is sold in a category which isn't covered by the eBay money back guarantee. Most of the categories you sell in are covered by eBay money back guarantee. So again, you are not covered by items not as described at all unless it qualifies in these few three cases here. That is it. That is all that you are covered for. It also, again, reiterates that down here. Why are only some return request reasons included in my items not as described rate? All of the ones mentioned down here are going to ding you no matter what happens in these, unless you win a case. Again, a case is not a return request. These will all ding your account. Now, if the buyer at the end of this decides they just no longer want it, even if they open it up as item not as described, it won't affect your rate. That's the only other exemption on here in any way, shape, or form. Again, don't mix up a request with a case. A case is not a request. Now let's look at seller protections overall here on eBay. Protections for top rated sellers is the very first thing they promote on here and talk about. Now this says all you have to do is offer 30 day or longer returns. That is actually not complete because you actually have to offer 30 day free returns just to be a top rated seller. This is the top rated seller benefits and requirements page here. To be a top rated seller, you have to have one business day handling time and 30 day or longer free returns. Again, this is why I have 30 day or longer free returns because of the top rated seller status, as well as the free return coverage I get from items not as described when I offer free returns. Again, the only way you are covered from an item not as described return request, a request, is if you offer free returns. Otherwise, you will get dinged and they can leave you negative feedback. So with top rated seller status, if somebody opens up a false claim of item not as described, I don't have to refund them for the shipping return label. I don't have to do that, nor do I ever do that if somebody does that. And if somebody uses the item, I can also deduct a certain percentage of that. When these cases happen, they cannot leave me feedback no matter what as a top rated seller status. If you are not top rated seller plus, you cannot get those removed. Again, we've shown you that clear as day through eBay's policy. So again, this is why I do 30 day free return policies. It grants me the top rated seller plus status, which will remove defects on these. So let's say somebody returns something and I don't give them all their money back. I keep part of it. The case is closed if I refund them prior to eBay being able to step in. It's a done deal. I am safe. Even if they come back and appeal that, I am still safe. They still cannot leave negative feedback. That is the only way you are safe is through the top rated plus status. Without it, you are not covered and those feedbacks will stick. Again, we've shown you that in the policy. So these are the reasons why this is so important to use this feature whenever you can. So looking at the top rated plus benefits to begin with, I've been told by many people it's a scam. You get nothing out of it. It's not worth your time. The feedback removal is automatically worth my time. It's the only way to get it removed. But on top of that, I also get a 10% discount off of final value fees. Under managed payment, that includes the fees on shipping, the fees on taxes, and the whole work. So it covers the entire transaction 10% off. So it is well worth it when you're doing high volume. Every little bit helps. If you're paying eBay thousands in fees a month, 10% of that is a pretty darn good amount of money. And when you multiply that times 12 for the amount of months in the year, 
you're saving some considerable amount of money. Now, every month, I believe most sellers with the store will get the seller protection summary email on what they did remove, what they did with your store. Now, I've had 12 actual defects removed over the last 12 months, two last month, and then I've gotten $8 in credit that eBay covered for me, returns and things like that. I have another one this month from a false reasoning for a return that will be covered as well. Now, you have to offer 30-day returns. Again, this is one of those things, plus you have to offer them for free. I don't know why it doesn't show it in here, but to be a top-rated seller, you have to offer free returns for 30 days to begin with. Again, as we showed you before, item that is described, you won't be covered unless you offer the free returns. So here's a case from this month that somebody just opened up claiming that I misidentified the item. It wasn't as described. Now, in this case, I did not refund them their initial shipping costs because, again, they were filing a false statement when they said it wasn't as described. I would take it back regardless, free of charge, but the way they have opened up a case that wasn't true, I'm covered by that as well. Now, if it indeed was not as described, I couldn't get my money back from the return shipping on this. I'd have to cover them for everything, and I could be held liable for that. But because I'm a top-rated seller, I don't have to worry about that. I don't have to refund them when I report the issue as they are misidentifying the return means on this. So here's a closer look at the return. You can see clearly up at the top, you were not found at fault. So it's already been cited in my behalf. So let's look at the initial response here. I just received the 1889 vintage shutter release um, ring. This was stated to be in good condition. Unfortunately, this item is not functioning because it is missing the main parts, i.e. the shutter blades, which are the essential parts which open and close to momentarily expose the film when the release is pressed. As it is, it is unusable because there is no shutter to release. I would like a full refund because it is not as described. Well, my description doesn't at all state that it is a shutter. It states that it is a shutter release and parts and a low ring. A ring is the circle up there. A shutter would fill in the ring and there would be a completely filled in section of black that would match the coloring on here and that would be the shutter. No shutter is mentioned, no shutter is included, no shutter is shown. Anybody who knows cameras knows that you would 100% see the shutter itself. My take is this person bought it, it didn't fit his camera, and now he wants to claim that there's no shutter, which wasn't included in the auction listing itself. This person at this point is asking for something that isn't stated, isn't shown, and isn't included in the listing. So already I would win the case either way, just by those bases. But he goes further and accuses me of misrepresenting this and the whole works. Again, I didn't refund him his initial shipping. Now, I could have kept even more, up to 50% of his total refund, because he actually opened up the item. He used it. He opened it up from a plastic sealed poly bag that it was in. You can see clearly through a bag that there is no shutter, just like you can see from the actual listing. So technically, I could have kept even more of this gentleman's money. I didn't do it because at this point I can still sell it. It's just as it is. It's been relisted. Now, one more thing everybody needs to do to make sure this person can't leave me any type of negative feedback is I need to report the issue. So what you need to do and what eBay actually states you need to do is simply report him as filing a false item not as described case. And what we have here is my report against the gentleman. I actually commented the listing was for camera parts and was stated as a ring and shutter release. Lease. It never ever said it included a shutter. A shutter would have been 100% visible as well as it would have filled the center of the ring. This seller opened a false item not as described. Either way, I am covered as long as the case was cited in my behalf and I followed through with it. Now, the minute I refunded the gentleman his money, I am covered as well. It's done, it's over, it's said in my behalf. As you did see, he tried to open up a second case, a challenge to my refund, to get his initial shipping cost back. I was not responsible. This has happened several times before, as you can see my seller protection email, which I just showed you a few moments ago. Now let's just look at one more quick aspect here, which again, a lot of people get confused on. If the buyer reports the item hasn't been received, this is another aspect, one of the most common ones you will get is either that one or item not as described. Now if you have tracking uploaded prior to the case being opened against you, you are covered. But if you do not upload tracking prior to the buyer opening up the case, you are 100% not covered for anything of item not as described. Again, you 
you have to have the tracking uploaded immediately to be covered. Now, one other thing I hear a lot is that the post office messes up and you're not accounting for that. You're assuming that the post office never messes up. I am not talking about the post office in any way, shape, or form having to do with the aspect of a scan. All I am stating is once the scan has been done as delivered, you don't have to reimburse anybody for anything for that item. It is shown as delivered. You are free and clear. That doesn't mean whatsoever that the post office didn't mess it up. It also doesn't mean that it wasn't stolen from someone's property. But that is not your responsibility. As a business, you are set to do your responsibilities worth of coverage. If it is not under your realm of responsibility, you shouldn't have to reimburse somebody for something. So for those folks who think that you should cover things when the post office says it's delivered, but yet a buyer says it's not, that is not a proper business decision. You follow it to the letter. You follow the rules and the obligations. You have no way to know whether they actually got it, didn't get it, or trying to scam you at all. You are following eBay's policy to the T. You do not have to give anybody a refund if it shows delivered. End of story. It doesn't matter what happened on the other end for business-wise. Now, if you want to give one out to, say, for courteous sake or whatever, that's on you. You don't have to do that at all. And again, eBay states that openly and actively across all of their platform messaging on this. And it's stated right here on this page as well. So again, it's not saying that the post office couldn't have messed up or didn't deliver it to somebody else. It's just stating that you are not responsible. You as a business do not have to worry about those cases. The post office messed up. That's beyond your control as well, which again is covered by eBay's policy, which states things that are beyond your control. So because it was delivered somewhere else, again, that is beyond your control. The policy states things beyond your control that are handled through the post office are their responsibility responsibility and you are not responsible. So again, there's two reasons why you don't have to cover items that are marked delivered. It's beyond your control and it shows it's delivered. So again, don't worry about those cases when it shows delivered. But as I said, you have to 100% have the tracking uploaded prior to a buyer opening up the case. I would honestly recommend every single person out there either shipping through eBay, pirate ship, and importing the tracking or at least cutting pasting them into eBay immediately. The day they go out in the mail, you add the tracking. It lets the buyer know it's on the way. It lets the buyer know you're on it. You're taking care of them. Tracking is important, and that will help you across the board. Well, there we have it. Hopefully, that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends.